Hey, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Sean Levana. I'm here with Mark Smith. I'm curious as we get everything started um, and get things running while I still see a bunch of people logging in. If you get a second uh, and you don't mind, just to make sure that you can actually hear what I'm saying today and we're good to go, just chat to me through the questions um, where you're calling in from or where you're listening in from today. Again, that'll just make sure that I know you can hear me. Um, and it's always interesting just to see how everybody's kind of spread out. So when you get a second, chat in in the questions as you're logging in, getting set up, where you're listening in from. Um, and that would be extremely helpful uh, as we go through. All right, so um, more people still signing in, but uh, as people are coming in, I'm seeing Boston, I'm seeing Raleigh, I'm seeing New York, India, looks like there's some more. So thank you, sounds like we're good. If you wanna chat in where you're calling in from, uh, keep doing that. Again, helpful for us to see and, and also just lets me know that we're running smoothly here. All right, so uh, as we covered, I'm Sean, I'm joined by Mark today. We're here to talk about how to build a team of tech superhero superheroes uh, this is a topic that um, I find fascinating and uh, really had fun putting together these slides. Um, we're going to kind of divide and conquer here today, but if you have any questions along the way, just go ahead and chat those in, and we'll get to those either on the fly here as much as possible or at the end of the webinar. Um, so let's get going uh, with everything we have to cover today. So here's our agenda. Here's what we're looking to cover. Um, we're going to look at addressing today's skills gaps, which is key in building a team of superheroes. You have to understand where they're at, where you need them to go. Why is the skills gap happening today? What makes learning stick? What are potential solutions to this? And then we'll get into your Q&A. Like I said, um, feel free to chat that in as, as we go here. All right. So a um, couple things that we want to chat about today. So the skills gap overall, right? Relatively speaking, and we'll get into a minute as to why this is happening, but relatively speaking, there are two ways to solve for this, right? So you have, we all kind of feel this problem inherently today. We have uh, more trouble filling jobs than we ever have historically. Um, we can't find people with the right skills. There's two ways that we typically look at solving that, right? And that's that you can understand um, what teams your skill has and the level of them, along with where you need to take them and then look at what might be needed, right? That's how, that's that gap. What do you have? Where do you wanna take them? How do you do that? And when we look at solving that, there's two ways, right? One is that we can continually bring in new talent. I'm based here in the greater Boston area. Um, this is a map of Kendall Square, as you can see. And this is a way that some employers are solving this today. You can see the map here of huge biotech companies, huge tech companies that are right next to MIT. That's where Kendall Square is. And so it's enterprises like Facebook, Google, Netflix, Apple, Biogen, Akamai. They can locate right next to MIT and pay a premium for that real estate because and, and form partnerships with MIT. And this happens at every large university, Stanford, obviously in Palo Alto, um, Texas and Austin, right? This happens everywhere. They can afford to do that because they're massive brands, and more or less a lot of times are monopolistic. But if you look at this map, you can see what's happening, right? 10 years ago, it was what this map would look like is startups that you never heard of. Now it's all these big organizations that you can see here and they locate there to pull the freshest tech talent right out of that university. And so if you can afford to do this, if you have a big enough brand for this, if you are slightly monopolistic in your tendencies, good for you. Uh, doing things like this are an option. You can become an employer of choice, form partnerships with a research university and pull new staff right out of there to get that new skills, new, that new talent that you need to start to build your team of tech superheroes. The other is what we were just talking about is to understand where you are and where you need to go. So instead of saying Kendall Square on this map, I know that I need to go from Alewife to Kendall and that's how I should view my team as well, right? Where are they? Where do I need to take them based on my specific needs? What skills are they going to need to get there? And how do find your map? How do we how do we go there? How do we get to that? And so this might sound cliche, and as a matter of fact, it does sound cliche, but this is more important than ever, solving this problem, solving this. How do I get my team the right skills that they need at the right time 
so that I know when they're ready to tackle the most critical problems for my organization, right? And this is why, while it sounds cliche, it's true. If skill building doesn't catch up with the rate of technical progress, the G20 economies could lose up to $11.5 trillion in cumulative GDP growth in the next 10 years. So then our economies aren't growing the way we need to grow. Um, the big problem, obviously, at the high end, this can sound very esoteric, but what it means is that we simply don't have enough people to keep pace with a rapid change of technology. Quite frankly, either we're not graduating enough or we're not upskilling enough people quickly enough to keep pace with this change. And to quantify that change exactly, here's what that means. There are 1.5 million software engineering jobs available. 1.4 million software engineering jobs available. An estimated 400,000 graduates are graduating this year with a degree in that field. We have a million person gap right now. So it shouldn't surprise you then that according to a recent CIO survey conducted by KPMG, the technology skills shortage is greater than it's been since 2008. And what that means for you or slash your business's bottom line, 76% of businesses say that a lack of digital skills affects the profitability of the business. So we went from really high level there, this is a problem for our growing economies, all the way down to this is actually gonna be a problem for your growing business too. Just, just this gap, just the skills gap. And so just to add a little bit more nuance to this, let's talk about some findings from a tech leadership survey Cloud Academy recently conducted. The results of which we'll chat out a link, you can view that full report. These findings come from responses of tech leaders from global brands, and it was done very recently. It was in, in market in May, we were compiling everything in June, so the data is fairly fresh. And what we found is that 95% of respondents expect to invest more in the cloud this year compared to last year. This trend goes right along with what we cited more broadly, which is that more and more companies are modernizing their systems and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. Makes sense. We want to keep up with the most recent changes in technology because it's very valuable for our business. Because of this trend, though, 81% say they're going to invest more in improving their team's tech skills, with 95, sorry, with 75% naming upskilled employees as a critical component to achieving their goals this year. So in short, What's already a tight labor market, again, as everybody on this call has probably experienced, is going to get even tighter. And 69% of tech leaders are using a hybrid cloud approach right now to manage their enterprise architectures. So now we're not just talking about building skills on one platform, but several. So, okay, there's a lot going on. A whole bunch of numbers are just thrown at you. But in short, that's what's driving the skills gap, right? And to kind of just succinctly say that, technology now moves faster than our minds can keep up with. This was a quote from an Atlantic article recently. And I'd add that it's not just our minds, but our skills, our talent, our teams, it's moving faster than they can keep up with too. So let that sink in for a minute. Technology is evolving fast enough so that we can no longer keep up. That's wild when you think about it. And it's happening because historically before the cloud, we used to be in control. Whatever updates we wanted to do, when we wanted to train our team, whatever kind of choices needed to be made, we can make them. So when we have to now upgrade our tech, it's out of our hands. We can no longer do it when we want. They do it for us, right? New tech releases and upgrades are are, are what determine now how quickly we need to adapt. And this is just an example of showing how fast things can change. We grabbed these earlier this week, right? Uh, just think about how many things, this is AWS and Azure, think about how many changes they're making as quickly as they can here. We now need to move in days, if not even subparts of days, right? Hours, right? We need to know what's changing and have the skills to keep up that quickly. It's no longer months or years, and it's no longer really at our call. So again, to recap, there's a skills gap. I'm not telling you anything you don't know there. The good news is we're the only ones that can get ourselves out of it. We have this ability to do it. But to do it, we have to choose our path. One is to try to outpace or outmarket these companies, the FANG companies, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and others like them. And look, 
some can do it. I use the example here of Kendall Square in Boston and Cambridge, but you could also say here, Drift in Boston did a really good job at marketing themselves and recruiting top talent. Toast POS did the exact same thing, but it's tough to sustain that over the long haul as probably both those companies would attest. These companies, the FANG companies are built for that. The other way to think about this, the more efficient, cost-effective way to reach your goals is to increase your team's tech knowledge, your, your tech team's knowledge. And what you're doing by doing that is you're leveraging that team that you hired. They're the team that you invested in. They're the ones that you have said, hey, you're a learner, you're smart, you've had good experience, or you're, I believe that you're gonna have good experience. I'm gonna put you on my team, invest in you, and in turn, they're gonna invest in your organization. But it's impossible to start a successful program here without first understanding exactly where they're at. Right, so we need to know what that gap is. We have to quantify it in order to solve it. And only with an objective skills assessment can you take teams and individuals where they need to be to reach your future business outcomes. The good news is that we'll talk about this. We actually offer a free skills assessment if you wanna take a look at it. But in the meantime, let me ask you a couple of quick questions here just to kind of get some involvement going. So poll number one, can you accurately speak to the tech skills of individual employees and teams in your organization. So that polls up right now, if you don't mind jumping in there and responding to it real quick. Can you speak to the tech skills of individuals and teams in your organization? All right. So, the good news here is apparently we can, which is great. If you can accurately quantify your team, you're in a real good spot. But let me ask you one more question. How do you measure your employees' tech skills? This is interesting as we're seeing results flow in, we'll share them in a minute. But so 100% of you said, I can accurately speak to the tech skills of my team. And now if we can show the results of this, 33% of you are saying, I do that by getting feedback from their managers. And two thirds of you are saying, I don't wanna answer this question. So there's a disconnect there, which is interesting. More than half of tech leaders can't concretely say in, in, in our recent uh, survey, uh, what their tech teams are capable of. And so obviously, as we look at where we want to go from here, understanding where they're at is, 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 is a massive need. All right, so let's talk about that, right? So we have this gap. How do we close that gap? The parlance for that is upskilling. Um, what I want to do here is just take a minute to discuss the benefits of what happens if you do help your team solve that gap, right? You have, you have, you help bring them up to speed on the technology they need and what you need to build your company next. So aside from ensuring that your workforce is ready to build whatever you have planned next for your tomorrow, there are a whole host of other benefits that come with ensuring your team has the skills and knowledge they need. So benefit number one, I always find this one real interesting, 94% of people, 94% of employees who receive training from their company say that they would stay at that company longer just because they've invested in them. And this is an interest that's particularly strong in younger workers, those that are hard to keep sometimes. So by investing in them, by helping them advance their skills, advance their career, it has a huge benefit for us too in that we're gonna keep them around longer. <clears throat> Number two, SHRM, Society for Human Resource Management, estimates that the cost of directly replacing an employee can run as high as 50 to 60% of their annual salary. And total cost, total associated costs of this turnover can rise to 90 to 200%, right? So think about how much we're paying developers or cloud architects or associated type roles on average. At least half of that is what it's gonna cost if they turn over, but it could be double that depending on when you take all associated costs into account. Benefit three, the average cost of a year training, selfish plug, $650 or less with us, and that's for an enterprise license. But in comparison, here again, Sherm estimates, the average annual cost of training and developing new employees is just $1,200. So we're going from at least 50 to 60,000 there to 1,200. And look, 
I can throw these stats at you all day that make the case for these benefits, but really there's an easy way to think about this. And it's not that you should play the guitar. It's as a team lead, as somebody in the spots that you're in, I actually think about this problem constantly, which is this. We all have rock stars on our team and these rock stars help carry a lot of weight. And even when I say this now, if I say, hey, who's the rock star on your team? Somebody pops to your mind. There's gonna be a person or two immediately that you think of. Well, we just talked about how tight the labor market is. Now imagine how tight that labor market is for rock stars. Imagine how many calls they're getting from recruiters constantly. So the next question is, as a manager that you have to ask yourself, well, what if they leave? What are you gonna do then? I would argue it's good to have a safety release valve, and that is having a well-rounded, deep bench that you can continue to work from. It's great to have rock stars. They make your life a whole heck of a lot easier. But it's also really good to have a strong team behind them so that you don't necessarily need to always depend on the rock star. Because by helping to develop your team, by restoring this employee-employer bond, not only are you deepening your bench, but the most important thing you're doing is telling your team that you care about them and you're investing in their futures. Remember, just by doing this, 94% of people are gonna stay longer. Restoring that bond has massive benefits and very low cost comparatively. Now, the question here that always gets asked is, well, what if I invest in training and they leave, right? I'm sure everybody's probably seen this meme on LinkedIn. Well, the response is always, well, what if we don't and they stay? Right? This is the rock star problem. You have one, one or two or a handful of people that are really great at what they do and they carry the weight for everybody else. What if they leave and that team's not ready to carry that weight? Restore that bond. Invest in your employees because it's the right thing to do. And then you'll be ready to reap the benefits. All right. So we covered this earlier, but it used to be up to us to determine when and how to train our teams. We could determine when we upgraded the technology, we could determine how to train the teams, we could bring the vendor in that did that, right? It was a little bit easier then. And for the reason we cited, this just no longer applies. But as tech has advanced, so has our knowledge about learning. And we've evolved now enough to know that what we used to do no longer works. And this happens, by the way, for very similar reasons to what we cited, which is, you can't put people in front of training and expect it to stick. We'll cover what builds effective habits here in a moment, the stuff of lasting and ongoing development, but we know that doing this is not optimal. It typically doesn't build hands-on experience. It's typically instructor-led. And so what that means is that when it's not hands-on, they're not in an environment that's similar to yours. They're not working with the rest of their team. They're not collaborating and developing a common set of languages and functions and processes and doing that over time. It's like a week. And it's typically not, it's, it is typically instructor-led, which means passive learning, right? Which can mean monotonous learning. As most of us know from school, most of us don't absorb knowledge this way. Secondly, it's not your true environment, right? You and your team need to work together. They need to build together. You need to have this common set of languages, the common set of tools you use to operate, and just these processes that are the way you operate. You need to be like a well-oiled machine when working together in order to get the fastest, best outcomes possible. Having them operate in an environment that isn't yours or that don't even mimic yours reduces the applicability of training. And if you reduce the applicability, you're gonna induce how much skills and knowledge they develop. Reason three, you don't know where they're at, right? If you try to apply broad training to your team, you're gonna infuriate half the team that are like, yeah, I know this already, this is basic, right? Remember back to school, you already knew something that was being covered. You learned it previously, or it was repetitive from last year, or you moved schools and you got the same, a new teacher, but you're covering stuff that you already know. How well did you pay attention? Probably not well, but you might have needed to because that's the foundation that you build on. But you need to understand that, you need to understand the context that is being given to build the rest of the skills you need that are specific to that instance. In short, a lack of relevance, whether that's to your environment or to each person's knowledge, does not help instill learning. It's passive again, like we talked about. So all of this basically says that it can leave your team stuck. 
and leaves you in the dark as to what they know and where they're heading. But there's good news. Let's talk about habits for a minute. Habits make learning stick and they build a foundation for continual learning. So what that means is that we all know what habits are, things that we do repetitively. They're easy to form, right? We think about this a lot negatively. You can very easily slide into negative habits very quickly. But the truth is that good habits are just as easy to form. And when you understand how we form habits, you can help your team learn a ton as they look to increase their skills and knowledge by making it habitual. You understand where they're at, we apply some habit-based knowledge, and that helps them develop their skills for the long run and actually makes it scalable. So let's talk for a minute about habits and what makes them stick. There's a professor that I, I, I cite his book at the end of this, if you wanna go get it, it's a super easy read real quick. His name is Dr. BJ Fogg, he's at Stanford University. He helped the early team at Instagram form a very, what we now know as a very habit-based uh, application. He's done a whole bunch of other work in his life, but long short is he's a professor and researcher there at Stanford. And he explains how he's, he's dedicated his life to habits, to, to, to behavior change. And he said that there's three ways that people can change their behavior. And he cites this in this book that I'll cite at the end, which is Tiny Habits. It's epiphanies, environmental changes, and taking baby steps. So epiphanies aren't regular or predictable. So I'm just gonna skip that one for this. You can't expect your entire team to have an epiphany at the same time and all of a sudden they're all off in the same direction. Not gonna happen. Environmental changes can help. So for example, if you have a place you would go to every day to build your skills, to study, to advance your learning, it can help. But for most of us, this isn't the case or really even possible, especially in the instances that we're talking about here with employer knowledge. So let's talk about that final one, which is baby steps. This is the opposite of putting people in front of impersonal training and hoping it sticks, right? That's a massive gigantic leap, which will not work for most people. So Fogg's formula for behavior change, he distills it down to this, B equals MAP, or behavior equals motivation times ability and times a prompt. I could do a full webinar just on this alone, but to boil it down, it means that a behavior occurs when motivation, ability, and prompt converge at the same time. This simple but powerful discovery can have a large impact on your approach to your team's learnings of new tech skills, to the way that you close the gap in your team. Big behavior changes require constantly big motivations. That's what I mean while well, most of us will not stick with instructor-led training. We need tiny behaviors, tiny habits that we develop that propel us forward. So, one example of that is, say I go to eat lunch, right? It's lunchtime now on the East Coast. I'm gonna go eat lunch, and after I do that, I'm gonna open my computer and I'm gonna log into Cloud Academy. That's an easy, tiny behavior with a prompt. When I eat lunch, I log into Cloud Academy. This forms the foundation for regularly maintaining the behavior. Every time I do that, I do this. Just doing that every time I eat lunch and training your team for something like that, puts the team in the spot to learn. When I do this, I do this, and then I learn. This will help the habit make a longer term change and make lasting learners out of your team. That's the, all, everything that we studied at the front, how quickly the world's changing, the best thing we can ask for them is to be lasting learners, always looking for what's next, always appreciating the ability to learn something new. So combine that with putting them in an environment that's a safe replication, of what they would do in production, you're off to an awesome start. They're doing things in an environment that mimics yours with your tool sets, and they have this behavior motivation forming, right? Again, full session could be done on this alone, and I really would recommend that you pick up Dr. Fogg's book to dive into this further. But, and then this is the book right there if you wanna pick it up. The, 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 <laughs> the image makes it look much more of a dense read than it is. But this is why building habits around learning is so important. Not only does it help you close your skills gap, but they aren't big lifts that are impersonal, inherently disengaging. Building habits are small, tiny things that get your team to where you need them to be over a period of time. There's small things that we can do every day that repeat and compound. And what we do is personal to us. That's the final piece of this. Everything that we do needs to be personalized. 
Okay, so we've talked a lot about where we are, why we're there, why educating and upskilling your team is more important than ever to build that team of superheroes and to close that gap. And even what's critical in making sure that your education sticks. But for this, you need to assess your team. You need to know where they are so that you can understand exactly where they are and personalize where they go from there. So to dive more into that part, I'm gonna turn it over to Mark, who's gonna walk through that. Thanks a lot, Sean. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mark Smith. So I lead the solutions team here at Cloud Academy. Give me one second and I'm going to share my screen with you. All right, so we're gonna, just a, a quick few slides here on the skill assessment, uh, and then I'm actually gonna get into it. So I've been here for about three and a half years prior to being uh, Cloud Academy. Sean's alluded to uh, instructor-led training. That's what, what, I, what I was doing uh, about for about six, um, almost seven years before I came here. So I've been in the IT training space for, you know, going on about 12 years now um, and seeing the evolution um, and always wanting to know what people are learning and validate. Has, has, has been something that's been really, really difficult to, to kind of ascertain through traditional instructor-led and other uh, methods. So I just want to talk a little bit about the solution that we call skill assessment. So one of the things here, so in Cloud Academy, at the core of what we're trying to do is help you to be able to predictably upskill your teams. Now, now that can be tough work, but what we're doing are putting together a programmatic approach that helps take that guesswork away. Now, to have an effective training program to get to where you want to be, to get and achieve that desired outcome that you're looking to, whether it's traditional just upskilling in a job role, whether it's working towards a project, consulting agreement, something for your customer, um, you know, moving to a, a more of a DevOps um, culture, you've got to kind of know where your baseline is. You've got to be able to understand where they're at. I saw with the polls, some people said they take their manager's word, a couple people said that. Uh, you know, they, they they didn't want to answer the question. So if you're sitting here and you're someone that doesn't feel like you have a real true grasp on, you know, where your teams currently sit uh, with their skills, uh, don't 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 fret. You're not alone. Uh, we've been there and seen that before. And I'm going to show you in a little bit here um, how, how we can help you do that. So a couple little screenshots to kind of show you this and then I'll actually dive into it. So what we're doing with the skill assessment is taking that guesswork out. Um, we want to make sure that you understand that we're focused on the tech community. That's what the, the core um, that we're looking to uh, advance those skills within the tech community. Um, and that community, that's our mission to make sure that you're equipped and skilled to go out and execute and stay competitive in the marketplace. Ultimately, with the skill assessment tool, you can assess across multiple cloud platforms and technologies. Uh, Sean talked a little bit about customization. All the assessments can be customized. Um, again, you get to, to baseline the skills and what's important and a big differentiator for us is that we're not just letting you baseline a team, we're actually giving you the team plus you can drill down into the individual and I'll talk about a couple of things that we've seen uh, with some of our customers here in a moment. Um, then after you get to there, you want to start to create uh, personalized upskilling paths um, and this can be tied to a number of reasons. A lot of our customers do have certification initiatives, but that uh, pivot from just having a certification and, and Sean threw up something before that tech is changing faster than our minds can even keep up with. Well, having that certification is great, but what about after that? So a lot of uh, the, 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 the customers that we're working with are seeing a need not just to establish and have the certifications, but ongoing uh, upskilling um, across their organization. We work with universities uh, that want to get a baseline of, of where their skills are uh, for students in a current uh, class for a semester and then roll out training programs along the way. And I talked about this before, but this this concept of, of moving uh, into DevOps, which is a conversation that we're having a lot more, is now, uh, you know, organizations are understanding that, you know, being a DevOps or doing DevOps is not just we've got tools in the tool chain. It's a shift in the mindset and the culture. So working with our customers to programmatically assess and baseline where they're at relative to overarching concepts within DevOps and then prescribe training that's going to go and attack those skill gaps that align, uh, you know, with the actual business outcomes you're looking to achieve. Now, with that, I'm going to pop over into the demo environment. So I think in the chat, hopefully you'll be able to see there's a link to be able to get uh, to the free assessment tool. Um, one of the things I have flashed up here, and this is not, this is intentional. I want to take you through uh, how you actually do this. So once you set up your account, uh, it's going to take you to a screen um, here. So I'm going to kind of walk through how that works, and then I'll pop over into a demo environment to actually show you what you can, 
maybe fast forward and look to see what some of the things are built out. Um, that's, uh, again, that link should be in there. Not only do you get access to the free assessment tool, you get access to the entire enterprise platform. Um, so we're happy to, to answer any questions that you might have for that. So you'll land on a screen here after you've accepted your invite. Uh, you'll click I'm ready, and it's going to take you to uh, adding in your company configuration. I've got my name here, skill up. And then you'll notice that you can configure SSO. Um, I'm going to actually go through the process of how I would create a team. So you're going to be pre uh, pr uh, prompted to launch a team. And we're going to call this uh, team one. Super creative there. And you got a list of uh, assessments to choose from. I'm going to talk about this more in the uh, in the demo environment, but you've got a wide variety here. We're not talking about just simple text-based assessments. Uh, we've got a variety of, 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 of exam-based assessments, but then also uh, hands-on lab challenges, which are scenario-based labs that you can assess, which are more technical audiences that you really want to test some of that, 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 that technical uh, prowess to make sure that they're where you want them to be. Ultimately, um, you know, we're going to start with an exam here, which is primarily what we do when we're working with our customers first off. And then at the next step, you're going to be prompted to add people to the team. So I can go in um, and invite Sean here. And we will add him as a member to this team. Now, for sake of the example, I'm not going to go through and add you know, multiple members. When you do go to the free trial, you can add up to five here. You can add them all to one team or you can parse them up into different teams. After I've added this team, um, I can go in and add more if I want and invite them to do training plans. And that's going to take me all the way through to the, to the, uh, to the dashboard once I'm done. Now, let's fast forward. And we've gone through and our organization is fully onboarded on Cloud Academy and we've gone through multiple assessments. I talk about those assessment cycles. So at any given time, you could come through and do this again. Um, you'll notice that you've got, like I mentioned, the text base or exam um, uh, uh, pre-assessments, but then you've also got the lab uh, scenario challenges. Now, in real world scenarios, we will have a lot of organizations start here, go through a training plan cycle, and then ultimately assign up one of these to really kind of test what they've learned throughout that training. Uh, again, get them some hands-on expertise um, and, and a challenge in a, in, a, in a safe and secure challenge uh, sandbox environment before you turn them over into production. And let's go back and take a look at an assessment that's been completed. So across multi-cloud here, this is a cross-platform uh, assessment. I talked about where you can dive into the results. Now, What's been great to see and working with now, I'll do a lot of uh, the, the sales engineering team will do a lot of pilots for our customers. We partner with customer success on rolling a lot of these out for, for some of our customers as well. But what's great to see is after you go through the pre-assessment, it's very eye-opening. So sometimes it could be affirmation of, of what you kind of assumed where people were at. Um, but oftentimes it's very eye-opening, especially when you've got a large team. Now here we've got three, but ultimately we will have teams of 20 people or more. And you can really identify some of those outliers. It's really, really important to know where they're starting from. So maybe you've got somebody a little bit further behind. Maybe there's someone who's showing more skill that you didn't know existed already. Um, and you can you can work with that. You can take them in, uh, you know, a level further when it comes to prescribing training. Everyone can get to the same end result but it's not that all road, all the roads have to be the same. They could just take different paths to get there. So we give you the unique ability to, to dive into the individual. And then you get a chance to look across the, the, the different domains at the team. So we're gonna show you a couple of core domains across these different cloud platforms where the team's ranking. What this is doing is formulating a baseline skill profile score, which is uh, a measurement of uh, practitioner level skills. So we're not talking about, I watched the video, uh, we're talking about, I've gone and watched the video, but now I've answered questions on an exam or an assessment. I've gone through and validated hands-on labs. I've proved that I have these practitioner level skills, which rolls the individual to the team and, and onto in your organization. And then I can get a look at the same information just overall within the, the cloud platforms. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to get the results of these assessments. Now, we're going to work with you to make sure that we get the right training in place for your organization or for your teams. Uh, we'll work with your individual team managers. You can set those teams up however you want, and we'll work with you to make sure that those are there. 
I, I talked about a couple of examples already, but just a quick look at, at a, a training plan here. Um, so this is a this is how you can see what everyone's going through, where they're mapping average score and how that's coming along on the actual. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to zoom in so much uh, and see where they're going. There's accountability. This is when I came from the instructor led training background. This is the closest you can get to that um, and, and an online training platform without being in the actual class. So this is super helpful in drawing out that programmatic approach. And what I want to do is just uh, just along the, the, the skill assessment is one part of it. Again, it's the baseline, but I want to just give you a quick look at what this looks like as they continue training on the platform, going through multiple training plan cycles, which you can sequence out over time. Now, if you remember what I showed you on the initial skill assessment, you'll get a look at some of the core domains. So if I I'll go into AWS, for example, the first screen is everything on Cloud Academy. Now I've got the exhaustive list of all the domains uh, within AWS. I'm at the admin level, so I'm seeing my entire organization at a team. I can drill down by team. And just to remind you, these scores are being populated based on their performance, not with just the initial skill assessment, but ongoing exams and quizzes and validated hands-on labs. When I say practitioner level skills, that is what I mean. These are, I have proved that I've, I, I have the, the ability to do the job and do the things that I'm being asked to do that are relevant um, in, my current, uh, in my current role. Uh, so now I can look holistically at our organization. Where are we strong? Where are some areas that we can um, you know, become a little more efficient? But now I can drill down to the individual. Again, it's great to kind of look at your organization holistically, but it's also great to be able to dive down into the individual and team levels. Who's showing the most practitioner level skill within AWS overall? And I can identify that from here within Cloud Academy, and it's going to continuously be validated over time. So we've seen, uh, you know, tremendous amounts of predictable upskilling driven by the results when we do quarterly business reviews with our customers. We're going and looking at this and being able to show tangible results of where they're, um, you know, where they're increasing their skills. And they're able to predict that and be able to actually, um, you know, execute on whatever their, their um, you know, digital transformation um, outcomes they're looking to achieve. And again, I can go a little bit further here and go into the security domain, the same type of thing. Now I've isolated just security within AWS and I can look at the individuals, I can look at the teams, get the same information. So we've got organizations that use this to you know, put people on projects, train uh, new employees, they go and actually create custom skills and use that to train their support personnel and identify how many tickets they can handle each month. Just so many use cases for this, and, and you'll get a taste of that uh, in the free trial. So I encourage you to sign up for it um, and, and see how that works out. Um, just kind of a, a little intro into how that, that all kind of comes together, and we'll be happy to talk with you about that uh, a little more. What I wanna do now, uh, I'm going to actually go over to our um, slide deck again, and we're gonna launch another poll. And there we go. So here's the, the poll. Um, Sean, I'll, I'll read this one and, and then you could kind of take over at the end here. Do you, do you offer any type of tech training to your employees? So we'll give you a moment to answer uh, these questions. And a reminder, we do have um, the, the Q&A uh, open. So please feel free to ask uh, any of those questions and we'll get to those uh, at the end. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Nice job. Um, looks like so. Good news is, as we see here, a lot of people do, in fact, offer training. It's great. I think that's been obviously one of the cases we've been trying to make to this, which is if tech's changing that fast, you're going to constantly need new skills. The biggest thing that you can do is help them become learners uh, and give them that ability to learn. So that's great. Um, all right, Mark, if you don't mind, uh, looks like you're sharing. If you don't mind just flipping to the conclusion slide and then we can get to the Q&A. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So look, the conclusion here is stuff that we talked about, right? You have to personalize everything that you're doing, both within the context of where a person is at and where your company is at and where you need them to go and where you need your company to go to get the training right, right? And what Mark just showed you is a way to understand that. That's your competitive edge, right? That's a whole heck of a lot easier than just trying to apply broad training or uh, throw your hands up in the air and say, I don't know, I'm gonna have to continually hire new people with new skills. It's a whole heck of a lot more work than it is just to understand where they're at and where you need them to go. And so this is a good thing to do. We cited all the reasons why there is to do it. Um, and if you want to do it, uh, we shared out a link that uh, could get you started on the right path there. 100% free. Go in and assess your employees. You can assign them uh, assessments of different types, depending on what platform you're on, depending on what 
DevOps tools you use um, and get those results and start to see what you should do from there. All right, so with that, let's dive into our Q&A. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and pop those up. Um, Mark, uh, let me ask you this I, first one. Yeah, go ahead, please. Which is, we're multi-cloud. Can I assess my team across a number of platforms? I think I was just hinting at that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 I should some some of the results there uh, on the assessment. And listen, one thing that I want to make mention of, and and you know, we can customize these fully as well. So these these cross-platform evaluations or assessments are available out of the box. But if you wanted to create some specific and pull questions from you know, our exams or even put your own in there, uh, you can create custom assessments across, uh, you know, the, the different cloud platforms. So absolutely, we we, we know that's the way things are moving. Uh, the majority of the organizations we're working with have some presence in multi-cloud um, and we wanna afford that opportunity to be able to assess and then and then ultimately uh, get baseline across all three uh, or more of those cloud platforms and, and roll out training programs for them. So absolutely. Good stuff, thanks. Uh, one other question that came in, um, and I think you started to, to kind of tease this out a little bit, but just maybe um, it might have been asked right about that time. It was like, what happens after the assessment? Yeah, the, and, and, and that's a great question. And it, it's always hard for me just to show one part of the, the demo. The whole solution is just, uh, it, it's amazing. But ultimately, after the assessment, we'll partner with you to help you kind of take a look at that. Uh, and we want to hear uh, you know, from you as far as what are you looking to achieve? evaluate the results of that assessment, and then we'll start to help you assign training plans by team. Everyone's different objectives. The individuals within their teams uh, could have different uh, objectives as well. So we can create personalized training uh, that map to the team and or individual uh, for you and, and help you get to that desired outcome. And, and I mentioned this um, with the training plans, but just to, to you know reiterate it, they can be um, you know, assigned out uh, over a sequence of training plans. So you can do this six months, nine months, 12 months into advance. That's what we're talking about when we say predictive upscaling. So the learning never stops. You continually assess and then go back to additional uh, training pro training plans to, to, to continue to forward on with, with the, the, the areas that are gonna be most important to your, your team and, and your organization. Awesome, thanks, Mark. All right, I think that is all the questions we have for today. Um, Mark, greatly appreciate your uh, involvement and your sharing your knowledge on this. And uh, greatly appreciate everybody that attended, asked questions, participated in our polls. I uh, look forward to seeing you on our next webinar, and we'll see you then. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.